So you want to start a business. You know, one of the things I think is interesting when you go to YouTube, I was just digging in here and you start searching like how to start a small business, entrepreneurship success, entrepreneurship motivation, and all of these other things. You know what you find? You find like, yes, you're going to see how, you know, Apple started. You're going to find information about like Elon Musk and his advice to somebody to start a business. Guys, they're great. They're the top 1%. They're like the .001. There's like 20 of them. You know what there is all over the place? You know what you should be looking for? Is all the millionaire insurance guys, all the general contractors down the road, all the guys that are driving those big old heavy pickups. They got a fleet of excavators down the road. You know who you know who you should be looking to? Are all of these folks that have their own companies all over the place. Not only that, if you pay attention, most of these folks are behind the scenes and they require you to have a little effort for you to get perspective. If you're looking for advice on how to start, how to grow, and how to expand on your small business, I want to talk about some of these influencers, right? So first off, I love Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk is one of those high execution, get it done, no bull snot approach, and I love how he speaks truth, okay? If you're thinking of starting a business, one of the number one things that you have to do is you have to get a ton of awareness of what you're actually like. Okay, um, I'm the kind of guy that has a dark side, right? I have a side to me that isn't that fun to interact with. I can get short with people. I can bull, kind of bulldoze people. First of all, I'm 6'5", 350 pounds. Like, I'm a big dude. I'm kind of overbearing. I grew up with, like, really aggressive football coaches, and I played sports my whole life. So I tend to be kind of, like, suck it up and get through it type of thing. I've had to go through where I was the captain of a football team, a captain of a trap team. I had kids criticize me. There's all sorts of reasons of why I have a hard edge to me. But to a degree, like, I try to be a loving person. But I know I got a lot of baggage. You have baggage. Not only do you have baggage, but you have only your own perspective. I, all you have to do is jump on TikTok for a little bit and watch some of the cringe. Man, go in and search YouTube cringe videos and start watching some cringy stuff. And when you watch cringy stuff, I always think of this one thing. Remember when American Idol first came on the scene and American Idol got famous because it showed the most cringe ever where people thought they were good at singing and they would go out to sing. And holy smokes, they were terrible. They were so terrible, we couldn't even watch the screen, and yet we couldn't look away. We had to look away a little bit and then look back at them because it's like, this train wreck thinks they're good at singing. That was not the case. Are you like that? Like, really? How would you know? How would you know if you're like that? You got to get perspective. So I know that there was a whole bunch of that, and there probably still is a whole bunch of cringe that I have about myself um, that I'm not aware of. No, It's kind of weird. We want to love ourselves, right? So I believe that God created you in the in his image, that we are his image bearers, that you have Im, immense more value than any animal. I don't think you're an animal. I don't believe that about you at all. I believe that you're special and important, that you are a child of God, and that that's important for you to understand. Um, if you kind of step down from the non-Christian perspective, you just think that you know, people say that you should be self-loved, that you should love each other or love yourself, right? And it starts with self-care and taking care of yourself. And once you kind of are in a good position, you can move forward. And to a degree, I agree with that. Now, I believe you should come to grips with the thought that God created you for a specific purpose, to do good things. He has you go through things um, so that at the end, you could have been a good steward of everything you had, right? Now, or you could just say, before you can help others or love others, you kind of, you got to love yourself, right? You have to come from a good point. Now, here's the challenge. There's a challenge that I think that is true. You have to love yourself. You have to be comfortable in your own skin. And yet, don't we all like not have that, right? We all have these little voices in our head that are telling us reasons why not to be confident, reasons why we suck. We get really, really scared. and Fear can totally encroach. Right? Well, I think one of the most useful things to conquer fear isn't to put your nose down. Yes, you got to put your nose down like a rhino and just blast through things. Like suck it up. Get through it. But another side is is to become aware of the dark side to your strength. Okay? I believe that you genuinely have a proclivity for something that if you grow that strength and that gifting and if you pursue specialization and absolute mastery in that strength. You will be phenomenal at something. 
I also think that as you surround yourself with complementary strength people who have gifts and strengths that are different from yourselves, that means that if you're really good at one thing and they're good at a complementary thing, one plus one doesn't equal two. You will get exponentially better results as you surround yourself with those types of people. I believe that about you. But there's also a dark side to that strength. Okay, and that dark side is usually just a, a weakness to it that you have to manage. Like, for example, I love being in the moment with people and moving things down the, the, the field in terms of solving problems and, and providing kind of a critical um, entrepreneurial um, consultant view to things to try and poke holes and stuff. Well, that's not who you want on your team that's just supposed to sit there and execute in one little part of a giant cog of a machine. Like, I was part of that at, at a church that I worked at. It didn't work, Right. Well, part of it is I didn't have the humility to just become that and execute and become relevant so that I could be in position to maximize my strength. Sometimes you just got to put time in. But really what it was is I wasn't very aware. And even if I was aware, I didn't do a good job of putting myself in the right position. So we have to become aware of this darkness, of this dark side, of this, this counter thing to our strength, right? And so if you're going to start a business, you want to become an entrepreneur, whatever that looks like, it starts with you becoming really aware of who you are because if you're not aware of your dark side and you don't embrace the truth about yourself, all you're going to do when you show up to sing at America's Got Talent or whatever it is, you're going to suck and nobody's going to choose you. And if you try and sell, you're going to interact with people are going to be like, oh my gosh, that was painful, right? And you don't want to try something without understanding how it is that you are, right? So how does that happen? Now, I was at a church and they invested heavily in this EQ 360 tool. It was called the EQ 360 tool. And basically what it was is I took, I think you tried to shoot for about 30 people that were your family members, your friends, and your coworkers, and you sent them an anonymous survey. And in this anonymous survey, it basically provides feedback, right? And we all kind of know this about the, the, uh, <laughs> the corporate world does this stuff, but it's helpful, guys. So this idea, you know what I did? I sent out a survey that said, "What's it like to be a What's it like to be a around Rob at his best? What do you like about him? What's it like to be around Rob at his worst? And then what do Rob's greatest critics say about him, even if you don't agree? Which is permission to gossip, right? And then they answer that honestly, anonymously, right? Not only that, but then they rate on a scale of one to five. How convinced are you that if that Rob could change when confronted with this truth? Which is basically getting down to your will. Like, how aloof are you or how flippant are you towards adapting yourself to become more aware and to grow in character and integrity? You do that. You do something like an EQ 360 or an awareness exercise or maybe even just start with a strengths exercise to know thyself, but... When I did that, you get just wrecked. And what's really weird is that when confronted with that information, I kind of nodded my head. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I'm kind of like that. Take it or leave it. Well, they left it. <laughs> they fired me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it was processing. I was in a wrong spot, and, and I didn't have the humility to kind of eat that. But, you know, overall in my life, as I know things, you know, because I have a strong strength and because you do too, this wake or this dark side, I think another word is awake. You're a boat moving through the water and behind you, you have the V behind that boat. And that wake is how you leave people. What What's your resume? What does stuff look like when you go through their life and you interact with people? How do you leave people? Now, there's two parts to the wake. Number one, there's how you get things done or how do you execute? Do you have a wake of getting things done at a high level, of actually getting results? Or do you have a lot of you say one thing and do another or a lot of missed deadlines or mediocre results or half-baked ideas that never follow through? What do your results look like? And then the second part is how do you relate to people? How do you leave people as you relate with them and work with them, whether it's at work or home or whatever. So I think that if you're thinking of actually growing a business before or starting a business, becoming an entrepreneur, doing any of this, you don't have to sit and not do anything and not execute, but you're going to be in a much better position to get up on the stage and actually execute and have people respond well to your sales, to your 
videos, to your marketing, to your interaction and customer service, to how you relate while you're solving a problem, if you start to realize what it's like to be around you now. <laughs> and I think the biggest thing, I made another video where I said that there's a weird analogy in business, right? There's a lot of folks in business and <laughs> capitalism, really, but in business where you know a lot about something, right? And there's a big, di it's like knowing a lot about football. You knowing a lot about football is kind of like the guys that know all the rules, they know all the teams, they know all the players, they know how a ball should be snapped and thrown. That's totally different than going in and playing the game, okay? When you play the game, you have different progressive levels of playing the game. You have just the basic participation trophy. Can you even get out there and play? That requires a lot more than it does to just know about it, right? Think of how many fat slobs there are of us sitting out there drinking beer, eating chicken wings, and know everything about football. But, man, we couldn't even get in and kind of play a semi-pro game, let alone in an organized manner on a high-performing professional team, right? So when you think about that, the doing of an activity is so much different than knowing about it. And then the second thing is that analogy of just like when you go to American Idol, right, and you're trying to compete, to a degree, you're kind of trying out. When you're a small business owner, you're bringing something to market. When I started Feedback Ranch or I started Nuance Financial Tax and Accounting, or even when I was at Thrivent Financial as an investment advisor, you're bringing your business to market, right? And the whole idea is it's time to sing, man. And you eventually find some judges, which are customers, and you're trying to woo them over to say, give me a shot at solving your problems. And you go to sing, and it's cringy, and it's bad, and it sucks. Well, did you get perspective first? I think you should try. So I think look into these EQ360 awareness exercises that you can do. Or you could even start by... Finding some folks that love you enough, that know you enough, that really know you. And instead of just tell me the truth and make me feel good, say, tell me the truth and equip me with ways that I could genuinely improve. Right? Maybe you find somebody that will be your guide and you have that guide go interview people for you. Right? If you had a really wise mentor or friend and you say, you know what? I kind of feel like this group of people over here won't even tell me the truth. I give you permission to anonymously or ask them to provide you feedback, which then you would feed to me anonymously, right? Gain perspective. Perspective means putting yourself in the shoes of all the people around you and giving yourself some feedback. Now that, again, you're created by God. You have meaning and purpose and value and you can absolutely push through this, right? There are evil voices and negative voices, you know, Satan is the great accuser. He comes before God. If you look at what he does in, in Job and all over the place, he comes in and accuses you before God of your sin because we are sinners. A lot of this is sin stuff, right? And so I think that there's a lot of whispers, a lot of negativity, and a lot of fear. And fear is crippling. But there's a fine line between obliviously, ignorantly, remaining unaware of who you are and how you operate and sitting in fear, right? This is, you have to be ready to move into uncomfortable areas of awareness. So number one is get some pre-awareness exercises, right? Get some folks to equip you with the truth to understand, how's my singing before you go on stage? Now, number two, you go out and you sing in front of American Idol and you suck. How do you respond? How do you change are you going to tinker with things? Are you going to get better? Are you going to see what worked and what didn't? Find out what. I cannot emphasize enough. I was running meetings four years ago over and over and over, closing none of them. I close like 95% now. You know why? I'm a learner. I kept tweaking my message and tweaking. How do I make this clearer? Where am I unclear? What was valuable to them that I missed? Where was the objection? Where did I talk too much? Where didn't I ask good questions? If I were to step back and say, okay, would I want to actually move forward with this person? Now, I didn't. I thought I was doing a good job, but I wasn't. And you know what was weird is I started reading books. You start getting perspective. I, I went in. I, I've listened to just about anything you possibly can. And rather than sit there, like I can't even play video games. I have video games I want to play, but I can't because at night I have all these little things like, ah, I'm bad at this. How do I get better at that? I'm not saying I'm the king at this. Like I should do this for my weight. I'm overweight. I got to fix that, right? But I guess my point is, is as you're executing, as you're running meetings, as you're doing customer work, as you're painting, and that's the other analogy I always use. It's almost like when you do something in business, you bring something to life. Entrepreneurship is creation. 
You're engaging with people and solving a problem. And to a degree, that system, I think, is as, as beautiful as painting. You've come up with a, a solution to a problem, and that's amazing, right? But you, you should always be continuously improving and analyzing and be your own self-critic. Do not be so amazed and happy with every interaction and just say, oh, man, I sucked. Write down, like, what are three ways I can get better? You should have a mindset of continuous improvement. That even when it goes well, you better find three things that can get better. Now, this is just in me, okay? I played football at a high level. I played sports at a high level. Nothing compared to all these people now, but like I played Division I. I was really good. I wasn't the biggest. I wasn't the strongest. I became the biggest and strongest and fastest, and I was good at what I did. But I used to go play basketball, and I'd see guys taller than me, small, like, and I outworked them. I lift weights harder. I was in better condition than them. And I knew how to use my my strengths. I was king of the pump fake. If I could hit all my free throws, it would have been really good. If I would have nailed all my shots, it would have been great. But like when I look back at it, it's like you need to be a continuous improvement person. And so you, you got to get good critical coaches. LeBron James has a coach. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan had coaches that guess what? Criticize them. Attack them push them, challenge them, right? Now, there's a way to do that so that high-performing athletes do it well, but you got to do that to yourself. Do you have someone like that? Now, a lot of folks will go hire a business coach. That's a good way to do it. But at first, you just have to be ready to like, you know what? Every interaction, everything I do, how do I get better? Is that good enough? Yeah. What's two things I can do? What did I do well? Run a little SWOT analysis. Your strength, your weakness, your opportunity and threat to whatever you just did, right? And, and start thinking that through. If you do that kind of stuff, you get more aware. You do an awareness exercise so you don't get up and sing and just have a cringe moment. Number two, when you do have kind of cringy moments, and even when you do well, continuous improvement. What are two things I could have done better, right? There's something about criticism. So I'm hardwired in such a way that the moment something happens, I'm always like, we could have done this better every time, like to a fault. And that's not that special in me. It's that my cynical, critical nature, right? Or critical nature. I have a critical nature. Absolutely. There's a very deep, dark side of that that I have to be on the prowl daily to, to root out, right? I have team members that do awesome. And I, like the thing that they didn't do excellently and then didn't show me how they were getting through it makes me mad, just ticks me off. Our value is to be rigorous, trustworthy, competent, enjoyable, and rigorous, those are values, and in, in rigor means that we do not just do stuff. We put the screws to things and really find out how do we get better at something. Trustworthy, competent. I believe in continuous improvement, right? But So there's this dark side of criticism, and you have to be ready to apply criticism. But there's a thing that happens where people think that if you criticize something, you're wholesale disregarding it. That is not the case. Do not disregard things. I'm not saying when you go out and you try something, find a reason to wholesale throw it away. You need to look at every shade of gray within your performance to find out of the 15 to 25 factors of everything that went on, what did you do well, what did you do adequately, what was subpar, and what failed. And usually, eventually you get to a point where you're not failing at anything, but you have a lot of shades of gray. Right, And if you read good books, you, you get around coaches, you become a learner, you watch, go have a mentor from afar. Like There's two agencies that I watch that I'm like, oh, God, I want to be them. I want to be them. They're good at what they do. We got to get there. And so whenever we're doing something, I'm thinking about, what would Michael Jordan do? Right, That's what I'm thinking. And, and I think when you listen to the excellent basketball players that are out there, they were always trying to think, what would Jordan do in this? That's what Kobe Bryant talked about. That's what LeBron James, love him or hate him. That's what those guys are saying, right? So I guess what I'm getting at is when you have an interaction, seek criticism, seek feedback, get feedback. And it's fine if they do that and take feedback as a morsel that is worth implementing. It's a beautiful thing to get feedback. There's certainly, and remember that when you do something and you're gaining feedback, there are probably 20 criteria within what you performed at, and there will be hundreds of variants of shades of gray of, you know, you got an A+, plus, an A++, plus plus, a B, whatever that is. And remember that it's, it's all about just finding little ways that you can improve 
and make sure that you're seeing that as this is a healthy thing. Remember that it's healthy to do that. It's unhealthy to be oblivious. Now, also, there's, a, a I think, a long-term pacing to this, right? So sometimes it's just time to just work hard and celebrate wins a lot. And sometimes it's time to celebrate wins and internally behind the scenes as the CEO or you yourself as the leader or you as the only person in your business to really start putting the screws to things, really start getting some feedback and, oh man, I got to get better at this. And then you have to invest in systems and, and, and purpose and work on your business to come up with a, a framework to work through it. So for example, a lot of times I... I'm trying to find ways. How do I make myself more clear? How do I communicate this better? How do I illustrate this better so that folks will actually resonate with it? That's how I improved my pitch, right? Something about this is I'm right. I think I'm I'm hitting all the right things, but now what I've done is I've tried to make more diagrams and have more visual support and slow down and have a framework. And you know, I showed it to a whole bunch of people. And and it's interesting is as you do that. It works really well. So your goal should be, how do I make this easier? How do I make this clearer? So there's a a series of questions you can ask yourself, but eventually you do have to go through a season where you're going to implement some systems that actually let you improve, right? So make sure that you're working on your business. Anyways, hopefully that's helpful if you're trying to grow. Um, There's a lot there. There are smarter people than me about this, but yeah, we got these Gary Viner checks. Yes, we got, let's learn from Steve Jobs. Let's learn from Michael Jordans. Let's learn from all these guys. But you know what? A lot of times when you dig into like the local entrepreneur around you, these are the secrets behind it. And and it's more helpful for you to realize that continuous improvement, becoming more aware, working on your business, seeking lots of ways to improve no matter how your performance is, and then actually addressing them systematically through a time to work on your business and, and always doing that, they succeed and, and just drive up and down your metro areas and you will see big successful organizations that started out with people just like you. You know, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, they were in a garage tinkering. Now they had a ton of funding eventually, but it's because they went and got results. They didn't just sing and get mad that people didn't like their singing. They went in and they kept tweaking, and kept getting better until they started to sing a song that people responded to. Good luck. God bless. You need any help with digital marketing, you need help with messaging, Google ads, websites, whatever, feedbackrench.com.